Radin and Ronin podcast, this time in English because we have an international guest, 11 times world champion in kickboxing and Muay Thai, Nathan Corbett, a legend of this sport, a very good friend of ours. Uh, uh, we can call him brother as well. Uh, he's even Misha's business partner in Ronin and Carnage gym. Before we start talking, I have to mention our sponsors. First of all, Kregatin, fantastic supplement. You're not going to find a better one. Um, all about it below in um, description of this video. And if you want to buy it, uh, you have to write the promo code Radin Ronin, which is give you some serious discount. And also, Misha has an interesting sponsor, which is called and also Yamamoto Nutrition from Ogistra. We can go on their website, ogistranutritionshop.com. And with the promo code RONIN, you have 50% discount on all of their merchandise. Now we can go to our guest. Uh, Nathan, thank you so much that you are with us again here in Serbia. It's wonderful to have you for the fourth time, I think, you're in Serbia, right? It could be more. It could be even more. <laughs> uh, the last couple of years, you're living in the United States, in California. Um, how was actually how is your life? What is going on in your life since you have stopped uh, fighting professionally in kickboxing and in Muay Thai? <clears throat> yeah, so um, four years ago I, I did I, I moved uh, from Australia um, to United States, and uh, since I've been there, I was doing some uh, TV work, commentating on uh, Lion Fight for uh, the, the Muay Thai show, which is which is fun, you know, to be. I guess uh, on the other side of the ropes, but still right there ringside. And it's taking place in Las Vegas, right? Uh, the show. The, the, the owners from Vegas, but they're doing a lot of international and also uh, national shows, all different states in America. So that's been great, and of course, um, keeping my seminars uh, global, and um, as well as um, just you know teaching clients and uh, have, having a part-time gym in California, and uh, lots of students as well. So still. All, all within the fight uh, Muay Thai arena, um, just doing it differently now. Very nice. Misha, I, I think it's the, for the beginning it's good to tell us your story connected to Nathan. How did you guys met each other and how did you guys start in being such a good friends and, 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 and uh, running uh, the business together? I, I think I, I told this story like on every podcast, but it was in Serbian. And this is the first time I'm talking, I'm telling about it in front of him. Actually, I was like the biggest Nathan Corbett fan, you know, and, and my goal, you know, when I was a fighter was like, man, if I go in the ring with this guy and I, I get off through the all rounds, then I'll have different perspective of myself. I will, I will think that I'm fucking somebody in this fight world. But uh, fortunately for me, it never happened <laughs> 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 because I was a bigger weight and uh, we didn't do so much Muay Thai, which it's like very low in Europe. And I just continue fighting, but I, I looked at his whole career. He knows that I know every of his fight, like every detail of the fight. And uh, I was always thinking of how to bring him to Europe, to my gym, to do a seminar, or just to meet him, because I was like, fascinated with, with, with the with kind of guy he is. He was a atypical fighter. He was, not, he was like a fighter, but the way he fought was like unique, very unique. And every fight attracted to watch full of aggression but with amazing technique and unique elbow striking system. So I was, I think I, I, I thought about it today and I saw on his page, I'm coming to Europe available for seminars. It's like, I thought someone was listening to me. And <laughs> I, I think I'm the first one that, 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 that sent him. Uh, was I the first one who sent you the message? Most likely, yes. Yeah, yeah I said, okay. <laughs> Are you, uh, are you willing to come to Serbia? He said, where's that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where's that? Siberia? Not say Siberia, Serbia. And then uh, he came and we did like a big major seminar. Like, uh, and, and, and I have to say this, you know, because he's, of, uh, he's like, a, like a fighter that doesn't have respects. He fights with this ferocity. I was like afraid. I was just like begging God, please not disappoint me, please don't be an asshole, because he fought in that, in, in that way, you know, he fought like, I don't care who's, I'm going to fuck everybody up. And, but, you know, he, I saw this like great guy that if, if I haven't knew what he does, I would never 
consider him to be a fighter. You know? Yeah, especially such a brutal fighter as yeah, he was. Yeah, especially the, the fighter he was. And then he came to Serbia and, you know, we met the seminar and everything else is, 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 just, is just a great history, which we'll talk about it now. Mm. How yeah. were your impressions, Nathan, when yes, you met yeah. Misha for the first time? And uh, <laughs> we've heard this story from Misha's mouth um, often, but, but um, I've never heard it from you. What was your thoughts yeah, on, on, yeah, on that? Well, so, um, you know, the, the, the craziest thing about the whole story is, is, is that happened. And I said to Misha, he said, oh, can you come to Serbia? And I said, I can come, but I have to come. I can only come on this date. And you need to fly me from here, and I have to be on. I have to leave on this day. You need to fly me to here, right? Like I wasn't demanding it, but that was just the, the only time I had available was in this two-day window. And I was in Germany, and I was uh, mm -hmm. in Leipzig, Germany. I said, okay, if you fly me from here, but then I have to be in Rome on the fifth because my flight was from Rome back to Abu Dhabi. Um, so at that time, I really only had those two days. So I just said. I, I, yeah, of course I'd love to come, but this is the only time I can do it. And he said, "Yep, no, I was done." So, um, so yeah, so I continued, you know, doing my seminars in Germany. Then I went to Prague, and then um, and then come back, and then and that was my time to arrive here uh, in Serbia, in Belgrade. And when I, you know, got off the plane, and not, you know, you never know who you're gonna who who do who to expect when you turn up. You know, I've travelled the world and done many seminars, and you, you know, most of the time, you, you, well, pretty much a hundred percent of the time, you don't know the person. You know, that you're going to go do the seminar for, so you never know what the, how that person is. And as I got off the plane, got my stuff, and walked through, I was just like, oh, I do have a brother. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's just like it was like oh, the brother that I never had it was there. Like, like this, that instant, like, bang, like the instant connection, like it was like two brothers had just met for the first time, but yet had known each other forever. Um, like that instant connection from that moment. So then that was my first experience. And of course, you know, from there, you know, we, we, we drove and then, we, then I got to get to know, you know, Misha and then he got to, he got to, he got to show me Serbia. Mm -hmm. So my, my, my interpretation and my impression of Serbia is through his eyes, which I think I got blessed with that because it's probably the best version of Serbia is Misha. And I got to see it and eat it and experience it and then come and do the seminar. And it was, you know, I think it was like 70 or 80 people that turned up and it was just a, a, an amazing, you know, basically like a 48 hour period. Yeah. And, then, and, then, and then I was off again, you know what I mean? Not knowing that soon to be that we're going to be, be a couple of months always back. living in serbia yeah, yeah, <laughs> for, for, sure. a, for a period and and then of course um creating what we've created since then yep. yeah i met you like five years ago for the first time i think it was your second visit uh, to serbia and uh, i was uh, also very impressed with you with your personality as a as a professional athlete and as a human being as well um, since then, we've been hanging a uh, couple of times. Uh, we did also one telepodcast in the time of Corona, you know. You, right. you were already in, uh, in California, and who is more interested in Nathan? You're going to find it here on, uh, on uh, this uh, YouTube channel as well. Um, what was always impressing me a lot is that recently, or in last years, you are... Uh, connecting that mental and emotional uh, strength, teaching, growth into the fighting sport that you are performing and, and teaching. So it seems to me that it's always becoming more and more important for you uh, to implement that mental, mental, mental part um, in your life and in your teaching. What can you tell us ab about it? Yes, uh, absolutely. You know, as a fighter in my career, of course, I knew, um, we all know that, you know, it, it takes mental strength um, to become a fighter or become anything, you know, to persevere and to go through the grueling training, to go through the overcoming the, the self-doubts, overcoming, you know, whatever small fears they might be, getting into the arena of, of, of Muay Thai and fighting and, 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 and keep on going. So, of course, it's, we know it's mindset, you know, and, but when you're in it and you're doing it, it's just like, okay, well, I get it's mindset, but I'm in it, I'm so deep into it 
that of course I'm challenging my mind, but at the same time I'm so physical. You know, I'm such a physical being in that time that it was only until I finished my fight career and then going, you know, years down the path of look, reflecting back and also seeing how much of a importance the mind is, not only for the fighting, but how important, if not more important than anything, how important the mindset is for life, for the journey of life that we, that we all have, whether it's in the ring, you know, training weights or, you know, creating whatever it is that you want to do for your life. I realize that the mindset is the number one importance. So, so now I'm not really sort of like just targeting fighters and going after fighters and going, okay, you need to think like this and be like this and go in the ring and kill that person like this or smash that person and win like this. Even though I do do that, it's really more about overcoming self-doubt and overcoming fears and, 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 and ways to, uh, you know, basically quieten the mind when it's com completely always telling you that you can't do something or you, or you won't be able to do something or some limited belief that you might have cap captured since a young age. So really, I guess it was just that transition into being a teacher and then realizing that I'm not gonna be a fighter anymore and now what's the most valuable lesson I can give? And I've realized for my own self, it's mentality. It's, it's, it's what mind, mindfulness, it's mental wellness, you know? So the more that I realized for myself how important it was, the more I realized that that's the work I wanna do. Because just like when I, it was important for me to be a champion and win, or not so much to be a champion, but I wanted to be a, a fighter that, which created a champion, which then I wanted to remain a champion, I stayed a champion for 10 years in my world title reign for 10 years straight. It was like, okay, well, that was what I wanted to do now. But now I want to push down the path of mentality and really help people, I guess, break the chains, you know, that, that, that might be holding them back. I have to ask you something because uh, uh, the topic of the 21st century and everything that happens now is lack of motivation in life, lack of this uh, life experience to do something more. How much did it influence you and affect you in any way uh, the, all the pain and the punches, as physical and mental punches, to become what you are today? Do you think if you just only ended up your fight career and came here today to teach about mental health and teach about mental awareness, mm -hmm. would you think that you'll be able to be on the same level as you are today? After all the struggle you've been through after your career mm -hmm. of reaching up here. And how much did life taught you? And how much did the ring taught you? Yes. This is my question for you. Yeah, that, that, and, and that is the bridge between between your first question and, and Misha's question. Now that is the bridge. The bridge is those, you know, those years between fighting and now, you know, that eight year bridge is basically what we're going from here to here. And that's the, the question to back up that bridge of why it was even more important to me to go down that path that we spoke about before. And could I have, you know, only had the fight career and, and, and being in the same place, definitely not. I think when my fight career ended, I had all that experience to draw from, but where I was at that time, I couldn't draw from any of it because I needed, to, I was already feeling like the down of a career and, and then coming down to the other side, which is feeling like you know, an avalanche going the other way, you know. I climbed the mountain and then I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going down. I was just like coming down the other side. So then over those, you know, uh, first you know initial three four five years and even now it's been eight years since since I've haven't fought that taught me more about the importance of mindset for living when fighting was about fighting that taught me more about the mindset around just everyday fight the everyday fight that we all have the mums the dads the children you you know you the cameraman like everyone those fights everyone has the only beautiful thing was now I had a platform, which was my fight career for people to listen. And I could draw back from that 15 years experience of fighting because there was a lot of similarities that, that built me, that made me strong, that I just had to you know, reconnect the dots in a different way um, and, 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 channel, and channel it you know, into, I guess, life mindset. 
living mindset. And if you want to be a champion, the same thing. It's, it's, it's really relative to both. So I wouldn't be, basically, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if I didn't have the suffering, mm -hmm. if I didn't have the, 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 the downfall of falling after my career. And of course, the, 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 uh, the, the, one of the best things about our story is that I met Misha at the, at the, on the downfall. So, yeah. so he, he, he brought me here as you know, a, a superstar. He's, like you said earlier, that, he, that I was one of your heroes as a fighter in the ring. And then I met you and I was on my down. Um, yeah, at that moment, you didn't feel anymore like this, yeah, right? And, and, so he awakened that up. It was like the, the, the end of my career. It was like the, 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 the most painful, I think, yeah. for every athlete, maybe. Maybe yeah. some deal with it better. But, but in your case, you were physically also in pain. Because physically in pain, emotionally in pain, yeah. mentally in pain. And that's when we met each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I had my line was still there and then the other side of me. I guess that was one of the other attractive things that I had. Uh, I was attracted to Misha in that time was because he was very mentally strong in life. You know, like maybe I was a better fighter than him in the ring, you know, and, and I'd done better accomplishments in that area, but he was yeah. mentally, say, tougher in life. You know, he was very strong with the life that he's had, the life that he's led, the things that he's done over those years. So it was interesting because I was like, he's, you know, I, 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 he, he loved what I had, but then I loved what he had. And it was just this beautiful, like, merging of the two to then where we've got to this point now where it's just like... <laughs> Ronin carnage. Ronin carnage, and that's the whole... And the, 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 the truth is, is this, this, the, the strength on both sides are equal on both sides now. Yeah. Before we start the story, yeah, I, I have just to add something to this. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, the thing that I wanted uh, for people to realize today in this podcast, uh, because uh, and uh, the question that everyone asks about me, how Ronin Carnage came to be, Ronin Carnage is not uh, like gathering a two people that want to teach you different technique, his or mine technique, or anything like that. Ronin Carnage is our symbol of brotherhood and fighting together to achieve where we are today. So it grew both of us much stronger. We became better men through it. And the symbol of running courage and training with us is to get you to be a better version of yourself. This is my, my law, it says on my wall, we don't create champions, we, we are teaching you how to become champion of, the, of your own lives. But um, not much of you were able to, to visualize it because you didn't hear the story. Now when you hear the story, how we grew to be what we are today. We grew to it through pain, through, stru through struggle, through friendship, through support. Support. Through support and without an ego. Ego is good in fighting, to be a fighter, not to give up. But sometimes in life, ego can be a, a like a live obstacle mud. like a like a love mud. you know fall in the mud and you cannot get up as much as you get as much as you struggle you how, how do you say it in english you know uh, uh the mud where you fall down living sand or something like that quick sand quick sand quick sand it can, it can be a quick sand the more you struggle to it the deeper you go down yes and uh, both of us are extremely egoistic in our life but in that period, we had to... I wouldn't say you're egoistic. You're not egoistic. Yeah, no, no, you no, have no. a strong ego. No, no, we're not egoistic. We have a strong ego. As an ego individual to, sportsman. As an individual that yeah. we want to succeed. Yeah. We want to be the best. In that case, in that, in that sense, I meant it. But in that period of our life, we had to kick it aside to be able to grow together. And this is why I asked you the question, because uh, I've been through from the start of y your, your conversion from a fighter into a coach and you're full of doubts like everybody has doubts you're full of, of fear you're full of everything like every other human being experienced mm. even even though you were 11 time world champion you were one of the most ruthless fighter that ever lived you had all of this that each one of you of us feels and you had to go through it again in the age where it doesn't go easy and it happened to you in the age of 35, people experience it with, with 20. Yes. 18, 17. It's much harder to be, go through that when you already achieved so much. 
So it makes it a bigger thing for you. Yes. And I have to say now, because I haven't seen you for four years since Corona started and everything, all this thing happened, you are totally different person than the one I, I, I left at the airport last time I saw you. Mm, Montenegro. So I have to say like now, live in front of everybody that I'm extremely p p proud of you. And I know that you, you're just gonna go up from here. Awesome. Yeah, he became a little more yeah. calm. He became everything, everything mentally, patient. mentally stronger. <laughs> yeah. So it's 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 obvious that you have been working on yourself also in that direction, in the direction of, of mental strength, confidence, trust to life in the in the in the certain in the certain manner, and uh, it's really wonderful uh, wonderful to see that. Um, I have another question. In um, some of my short videos lately, I was touching the, the subject of professional sport and uh, the dark side of the professional sport. As you both have mentioned, uh, from the professional athletes' careers, you guys have uh, injuries, pain that you're bringing along. Uh, the professional sport, not only the combat sports, but all sports, are becoming are becoming uh, a very brutal thing. Are becoming um, uh, circus, show business, um, uh, gladiatorship, or whatever. Now my question is, uh, what can we do about it? Is it still? Does it make sense still to teach the children to try themselves in the professional? sport or or it is becoming almost something counterproductive great question Thank you. great question you know i was challenged with this thought um in the past year and the challenge was that i saw a lot of violence in the world and i was like and I saw people sparring in the gym one day in California and they were beating each other in the brain. And I was like, do I really want to be a part of that? Do I really want to make someone become that person to beat that person's brain? Or do I really want to add to that, you know, that, that mentality of like violence? Do I, do I really want to do that? I question myself. There's so much, you know, evil in the world and I was like do I do I want to add to that do I want to be responsible if that person gets knocked out and now they got like some small like brain issue or something's wrong with them because I trained them do I want to be even responsible for them do I even want to be in the same area so that if I ex exclude myself and then I'm not responsible for what they do so I was challenged with that thought I don't, I don't know why I was challenged with that thought but it's just it come to me and I thought about it for like a few weeks and what I realized was that everyone's gonna do what they wanna do. People are gonna choose their own paths. People are gonna, I'm not forcing someone to the gym. You know, they're gonna choose their own paths. So they're gonna be there anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's better that I guide them than someone, someone else. Someone that doesn't have the intelligence, someone that doesn't have the knowledge, someone who doesn't have the caringness of that person, even have that thought that what am I doing with this person? Am I keeping them safe? Am I protecting them at the same time, strengthening them to go out there and get the punches and throw the punches and take the punches because that's what we're talking about, that we all need, even like the old Rocky saying, it's like, how hard you get hit, it's if you can get back up, you know? But in the metaphor of fighting, it's like, of course, you know, you don't want them to be taking the punches, but they're gonna have to take a punch. I always say, when I talk to people about fighting, accept that you will be punched, but don't accept getting punched. Accept that you will hit, be hit, but don't accept it. Like, oh, yeah, let me hit me, oh, okay, I'll accept that. No, you want to be able to block, move, defend, punish them first. So then I had that realization, I went, no, it's my duty to empower, the, to empower people. And how do I do that? I do that through awareness. I do that through the, 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 the role of, like, say, a sensei. And, it, and, and fighting is an aspect of that because they need to be strong. There's so many weak people in society now. There's so many weak uh, teenagers coming through because of the entertainment and the technology and all the things that weakens them and softens them. 
And I'm not even saying I'm a hard man because I'm not a hard man. I was just a hard man in my chosen sport. That's it. But I'm a soft man otherwise. But I, I at least know that I'll fight for what is what is right. At least I, I know that I'll die. I'll die on my sword. I won't just run away, sort of thing. So at least there's a, there's a strength there. I feel like, you know what? They're going to choose it. So it's better that I guide them than some some other person that really has no clue. So then it, 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 it took me away from that thought and then it's okay, well, how can I make this person not get hit? How can I make mm. this person hit first? How can I make this person do the right things to be in the right place? Like how can I feed that person to make him or her stronger, safer, more powerful, more what they need to be? So, so I feel like it's better that there's more of us good, like Misha, then there's then 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 us not being there, and there's only bad. Now there's there's a lot of other good people too on planet Earth doing amazing things, but I'm just giving an example. So it's better that we are there, guiding, from the from that position, than just you know allowing them to sort of do it and and, and maybe find the wrong teacher. Yes. What is your opinion on that, Mish? I never. We barely spoke about it. Uh, about professional sport. Yeah, uh, I told him uh, professional sport now isn't the sport. I wouldn't call it a sport, ever. Sport is when you compete and when the better man wins and when you do it for from being a better man. Now sport is like like gladiator arena. You know, people want to see injuries, people want mm. to see blood, people want to see bad things happening. Mm. People are not there to see a sport to see a good fight no people if if somebody's not heavily knocked down or injured or broken leg and uh, they're not talking about it and uh, if they talk uh, only if, if the people talk about it repost it you know, or do it and this this fight or fighter earns money only the brutal only the brutal, brutal things fights, earns yeah. money now because we live in, in mm. uh, uh, if they're trash talking so if they have a bad influential on our kids it's paid. It's paid. If you know, only the bad things are valued now more than good. That's why I am always against professional sport. But if someone's an athlete, if you train your whole life to be the best, you have to do it. If you want to live from it, you have to yeah. do it. You know, so there isn't much of a choice in it. There really isn't. But being us in it, as Nathan said, yeah. Uh, with all the bad influence, I would be egoistic, but I don't care. Uh, we are the light bringers. We are the ones that giving them good energy, good motive, good uh, uh, good example of how to behave, how to be samurai, ronin. Yes, you know, this is what we teach them. Well, a lot. I, uh, there are. As he said, a lot of great coaches, which we respect and admire, but there are a lot of assholes that 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 uh, in do, in the, the, that encourage them to be idiots, to be paid, to be clowns. Oh. I was always saying, you know, to everyone, you know, we are living in a world where clowns and hyenas are ruling it. Oh. Clowns are in charge, and hyenas are are around protecting them. In the time where we grew up. We were taught that, man, you need to be, you know, you were watching the movie, you see the main character, which is like a great guy, doesn't want to trouble, doing his own thing, you know, everybody's bullying, he won't touch his girl or sister or this, and then he trains to be the best version of himself so he can uh, beat them up, oh. so he can protect his family. Mm. But it only in, ends up in a beating. It doesn't end up with, like, movies you watch now. Now you see he cutting their head off and taking his spine and attacking. It, yeah. it looks like a horror movie. You know, every movie is a horror movie. And, uh, you know, in my time, Batman was a hero. In this yeah. time, Joker is a hero. Yeah. We, uh, all of us wanted to be Batman. Now everybody wants to be the Joker. Mm. Yeah. That tells a lot. Yeah. You said and, something and, and, and sorry, fantastic. And, and this is the professional sport. In our time, everybody wants to be Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, now everybody wants to be Conor McGregor. I don't know if he's a bad guy or a good guy. He can be the best guy in the world, but this is the way he promotes it to earn more money and to be more po uh, popular. 
you touch the you, you touch the subject um, somewhere in the middle of your speech that I really like, and I'm going to quote you on this. You said uh, the clowns are in charge and the hyenas are somehow behind guarding them. I would even say the hyenas are uh, giving them the orders. And um, it seems to me that we have this situation on all the levels. In the professional sport, in the politics, in the business, like it seems that the world is becoming you know that the guys from like the dark the hyenas are are, are are pulling the are pulling the strings as Metallica would say it um, what is your Nathan opinion ab uh, on the world we live in at the moment that has been changing so much in the last couple of years and we've been all experiencing that change and how do you cope with all that in the sport but also outside of the gym outside of the sports arena you know in 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 your private life on all the continents <coughs> yeah i mean it's it, it actually all ties into the same it's 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 respect there's a lack of respect um and dignity i would yeah, say like for example, I, I'll tell you a quick story about what I call respect. When I was growing up, I had people that I looked up to. Mm. And they were like 10 years ahead of me, you know, in the fight game. And I, did, I was like inspired by them. And they were world champions and I was like 17 years old and I did a seminar with one of them and I was just like wow you know this, this guy's everything you know and then he was like that 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 future vision of what I maybe could become maybe it's all a maybe I don't know I had a desire I didn't know if I had the talent I didn't know what was going to happen so I had like a 10-year vision of the future of what I could become and that was a very inspi inspiring as a young young man right so then fast forward many years later, I've become world champion, I'm world champion, I'm winning all these world titles, and this guy had retired. But now he's like 36 or 37, and I'm like 27 or something, and he decides to come back to fighting. Very genetic, very talented, Ian Powerhouse Jacobs. Very genetic, he's, he's in his 50s now and he looks phenomenal, he probably could still fight. So he had the ability to come back, but he used to fight at a lighter weight, but now he was fighting at my weight, right? Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to fight him because I'm like, he's the guy that I looked up to that was 10 years ahead of me that showed me the way. I don't need to beat, I don't need to beat my hero. Let him be my hero. Mm. I'm already becoming someone else's hero. I don't need to take my hero out. Mm. And then he started fighting and, um, and he used to always be kind to me and friendly to me at fight shows and all of a sudden I went to this fight show and because it was around when he was kind of fighting and then he kind of must have felt like maybe, kind of, maybe someone's going to try and match us, you know, that'd be mm -hmm. the ultimate fight. Mm -hmm. So I felt his energy changed uh, towards me. So I, w I went up to him and I said, hey, you know, he, uh, how are you? you know, da, da, da. I, said, I, I said, I just want to let you know something. I have no intention on fighting you. Just want you to know that. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it just was like, whew, he changed. Not like he was scared of me, but yeah. you have to become the monster and hate everyone. Yeah. If you want to be a champion, you don't have to hate everyone, but you definitely can't be their best friend. If, you, if, so, if someone's in your weight class, don't be shaking their hand too much. That's mm. my, my, how I was anyway. And, so I just let that soft, and then he went on, he had some great fights, and then eventually, you know, got back out of it, you know, and I just kept on my, my, my journey. So, what is that respect? The other thing is, like, when I was growing up, you know, you looked up to, say, like, people like Mike Tyson, or Costa Zhu, the, the Russian, the Russian-Australian, the boxer, yeah. remember Costa Zhu? Yeah, of course. And I used to love Costa Zhu, you know, he was such a great boxer, I loved his style of fighting. Well, let's just say it was like Bruce Lee, or, or if he was still alive. And he had this respect for them. I had respect for my senseis, my Japanese masters. Even to today, the Japanese master, master of my teacher, who is mm -hmm. a master, he's in Japan, he's in his 80s, he's like direct line of the samurai. 
even if I see him now, the first thing I'm going to do is go over to him and, and bow and, and, and look at the ground. Not because I'm afraid of him. I could crush him like that. He's like an 80-something-year-old man. But just out of the pure respect for him, of what he's conquered and what he's done and what he's done with his life, right? He deserves that respect. He doesn't run around and ask people to give it to him, but he deserves that respect. So what people do now is brag, just like Jake Paul has bragged about beating up his hero, Anderson Silva. Yeah. I think Jake Paul's doing amazing things and good for him, and I see how he does a lot of charity work. So I'm not bagging him right now because I think, I used to not like him, but I realize he's actually doing good things, you know? But he's like, Brad, it was exciting that he met Anderson Silva when he was 15, and now he's going to knock him out. So then he did that, almost, you know? Or like, someone else just can't wait to, you know, get so good that you, get, you, know, you beat your heroes. It's like, why? Mm. Why do you want to take that fantasy out of the world? Mm. Why do, you want to, why do you want to do that? Well, what do you even need a proof to do that for? Like, they're 10 years ahead of you. Let them just sail off into the, in the sunset and enjoy their career. It's not that you're trying to prove that you're better than him. You're fighting him not even in his prime anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what are you? Just like when, uh, they've, when they've put Holyfield in the ring, you know, when the band of Holyfield just had a boxing fight, it's just like, <laughs> he should never have been in there. In the 60s. You know what I mean? It's terrible. Like, let, it, let, it, let a van der Holyfield retire with dignity. But, I mean, yes. he put himself in there. That's his, his bad, his, his problem as well. Yes, so probably there's a no little respect. bit of greed. So like, there's no respect bit. in the world, right? So then what happens is people can message me. I'm talking about respect. So I've, I've earned enough right in my life with the things that I've accomplished and the things that I've achieved to be addressed as, hello, Nathan. Hello, sir, if you want to talk American. Hello, champion. Hello, carnage. Hello, sensei. And I just, people on Instagram will just message me. They won't even address me. They'll just ask me a question. Like, I'm supposed to just stop what I'm doing and reply to them. Like, da -da -da. like not even, oh, can I, see, uh, can I can, do, sorry, do you mind if I ask you a question? I know you're a busy man. I want to take some of your time. And anyone who does that, I answer every single question. Because I'm not too big for myself to try and help someone else. It doesn't matter who they are. But people have no respect. And that's the problem with the world. And now they're trash talking the fights to make things. Muhammad Ali, you spoke about Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Muhammad Ali was like doing the trash talking in a joking, poetic way because he was like, you know, you know, a poet and he, could, he did it, but he never really trash talked. It was just yeah, like... I don't know, Muhammad just, Ali did it beautifully. Beautifully, you know, I mean, of course everyone he tries He was to, showing his beautiful mind yeah. and... So, and he was unique and he was amazing and he, and, he, and he did, so, and he was phenomenal and he did a great job at it. And now, of course, I, I understand Connor and understand what they're trying to accomplish and what they're trying to do. And like I said, I'm not bagging him either. I think he's gone too far to be personal and he has a bit low life sort of stuff he did on the last act, but whatever. We're not here to talk about Connor, we're here to talk about respect. Yep. So to me, it doesn't matter how badass you are. If you don't have any respect, you, you don't mean anything to me. You don't mean anything to this world because you're, you're not giving the impression on anyone. If you're, if, if, if you, you know, you got Thriller, then you got like, you know, people smoke marijuana, okay, but then all of a sudden you get people like, you know, like the rappers that smoke and they go out on stage and on TV smoking blunts. Like, I get it. Smoke it in your own home. Yeah. You don't need to tell a teenager that it's good because it could ruin their life. Absolutely. Don't make weed so openly like, you know. Absolutely. Open like it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. No, it's not cool. It could actually ruin a kid's life. Yeah, it could become it's, nice. it's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's not for everyone and it shouldn't just be exposed in a manner where it's cool just like the people that they do these days, right? So these events, you know, these thriller events, all those people and Snoop Dogg out there smoking a blunt. It's like, no, this is not cool. This is not martial arts. This is not sport as such. Even though I didn't look at my fight career as sport, I looked at it as like a gladiator battleground, but I was respectful. I fought like an absolute demon, but I never did anything illegally. I fought by the rules. I never kicked in the groin, I never headbutted, I never hit them when they were back was turned to me, I never did anything that the rules didn't say I could do. That was it. So I wasn't like a bad sportsmanship, but I was very vicious at what I did because that was my way of getting the job done. Yeah, yeah but, but it's a problem. Not only, not in that, because now kids think that uh, by all these guys promoting all the bad things, that it, this is the way to start to do it. Yes. 
I, 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 I had a, a, from our, our last uh, gym talk uh, for, uh, with the Dushan bodybuilder. You know, a lot of people, you know, I've been open with what I use, when I use, you know, and I never hide anything in my life. But, you know, you know when you do it, you know when you don't. First, you have to develop yourself as an, as an athlete. You have to give your maximum, you have to reach the highest level you can. And then, if the situation uh, needs you, then you can take something, illegal or not illegal, to go by. You know, it's, it's how the world works. But you don't take the, the stuff like the steroids, the, the anything, before you start training. Uh, kids are writing to me, asking me, what should I take so I can start training? You know my answer is, take your hand and slap your face. This is what you can yeah. take. Yeah. Take your hand and slap your face hard. Yeah. If you reach to a level, said, okay, uh, my blood is, is bad, my hormones are low, this is, I have a problem, I've, I've uh, uh, the uh, professional career it's got the best of me I can't continue and, and then I will say okay con co consult a doctor or a specialist who specializes in that and he can help you so take the things as medicines from a professional who does it consult with people everyone today wants a blue pill give me a blue pill I want I want to cut my weight okay here's the pill if it was the case, if the blue pill, the magic pill exists, there, there wouldn't be any fat people in the world. Everybody would be perfect. But the pill doesn't exist. You need to train hard. You need to diet. You need to suffer, sweat, and cry a lot until you reach some kind of perfection. In everything in life, not only physically, Mentally also, you have to read a lot of books, you have to go to a lot of classes to be good in anything. But in now, with promoting all this, they would rather take a gun and, and act like they're, they're an idiot so they can attract, because it's popular, you know, girls like it, oh, he's crazy, or he's hot, he's that. That's why all the bad things are happening. That, that's why there are, are no real men anymore. How many times you heard from normal girls that they cannot find anybody? Yeah, and I guess to find a real man, you know, that's a good question. Like, what is a real man? Because obviously you could say, well, that's a real man, that's a real man. Well, he is a real uh, man. So. I, I have a definition for yeah, that. Yeah, so what's the definition? The definition <laughs> for that. I, I'll see if I fit this, this I, definition. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I separate, I, I se <laughs> separate <laughs> men from lions and from sheep. A lion is not a man who is always have to be alpha. A lion is a man who has his path, who has its belief, and who fights for it. Mm. Who doesn't try to be anything else. That's gold that. right there. That's a lion. Yeah. You don't have to be a winner, but you have to be a fighter. Yeah. And sheep are the ones that follow the trend. You know, that goes in, in herds where everybody goes so they can have it easy. Yeah. And I, I don't mind if somebody likes it like that. For some, it's a dream life. Mm -hmm. They don't have to think. They don't have to fight. They don't have any struggle in their lives. They just go with the flow. So you think maybe it's a trend? to be disrespectful? Yeah. The, that's the, what, that's the, what, I mean, we talk about, I guess the original I'm question was... What's happening? What do you see? And I was talking more about like how I see it. The disrespect is, is what I find. There's no respect anymore. No, yeah, it's a that's, trend. That's, that's what it is. It's yeah. a trend. You won't be cool if you come to somebody and say, excuse me, if you're polite. I envy, I admire you. I, can you help me? Can you give me, can you tell me something that will make me be better version. I'm stuck in a position where I cannot get out. No. He would rather go do some stupid thing that will put him in jail or put him in trouble. So somebody says, oh, he's a crazy guy. He was in jail. He did this. He did these bad things. Oh. And he'll be cool now. It's a trend to be yeah. like that. In our time, you know what was cool? 
if somebody was a successful athlete, if somebody was successful in some work, if somebody would had a like girlfriend he respects, admires. Yeah, or you know, can play guitar can well. Play guitar, they can see, you know, they can be like the man in the, you know, that can be himself and not be judged because he's doing something good. You know, I, 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 I know, I know, I know guys that are doing are doing martial arts and are big tough guys, but inside them, so they want to be dancers. Mm. They want to be singers, mm. but they are not allowed to do it because they want they they want to be cool. They're cool now. They have respect. People are scared of them. They have empty doors. But he knows if he does the thing he likes, he'll be judged. People put fingers. People will, will laugh at him. Mm. Because it's a trend not to be like that. Yeah. Nate, I have uh, one, one, one more question for you. Um, you are the world champion uh, 11 times in kickboxing and Muay Thai. You were representing your country, Australia, as a fantastic athlete. Um, what do you think of the situation we have had? I'm asking that because they just announced that Novak Djokovic is going to play, uh, is going to be allowed to play in, uh, in Melbourne, in uh, Australian Open in January. Um, did you follow the situation that Novak had last year with uh, not letting him play um, in Australian Open because he was not vaccinated. Yes. Then they even put him in that kind of... A holding cell. Yes. Huh? In the yes. cell and all yes. that stuff. What is your opinion about that, 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 that story that he had there? And uh, what is your opinion about that fantastic athlete of ours that we are all proud of, Novak Djokovic itself? Yeah, well, the first thing that I'll say is um, it comes back to our original, some of the original yeah, conversations we were having around like, okay, well, let's, let's be those leaders to help those people in need to make them strong. And that's when, when, when that happened in Australia or when the whole Australia shut down, when the whole of, because I, I got locked out of Australia, when the whole thing got shut down, everyone just went, okay, bend over, okay, yeah, give me the vaccine, like, don't ask questions, let's just go do it. It kind of, I, I felt ashamed to be Australian, to be honest with you. I felt disappointed in the Australians. I thought they were more fighters. I thought they were more like, well, no, nah, come on, mate, don't worry about that. But instead they just went, they just bowed down to the government. And I understand the ones that maybe had to at some point to keep their careers and financial to feed their family. But at some point it's like, you've got to stop and say no. So I was living in America, walking back in, it was just very disgusting. The reason why he's allowed to, to do it now is because there's no COVID rules now. You don't need to be vaccinated to fight Australia anymore. Yeah. You don't have to. So that's the only reason why he's playing. If, yeah, it, yeah, if sure. it was still the case, he wouldn't be in there. They would, it doesn't matter. So that's a, that's a whole another sensitive subject that I don't want to go too deep in. But um, my personal opinion is it made me disgusted in Australia and disgusted in how weak as a society that they're becoming, thinking that this, is, this, this thing that they call a vaccine is, is, is the savior and, and that it's okay. And they just like run around and just like, yep, no worries, and, and, and be pushed and bullied and, and dominate into a corner. That's the whole thing. It's like, I, um, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, but I, I, I believe in my intuition. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's it. I only believe in my gut when it comes to things I don't know. All right? I, don't, I don't quote things I don't know when I talk about any kind of knowledge, when I talk about anything on my car chats or anytime on a podcast or anytime I speak, anytime I open my mouth, I don't just vomit words I've read but have no idea what the word means. I don't just vomit words that someone told me that I haven't actually lived it, experienced it, transformed it, and then speak about it. So I don't talk about science because I don't know science. I don't talk about vaccine, whether it works or not, because I don't know if it does. I don't talk about, you know, it saved Australia or it saved the world, because I don't really know. All I know is what my gut told me. And this is no. This is a, this is, this is, this is a no. So, to me, it was more, again, like, you know, sad to, to watch and see. And, of course, you know, times have changed, and look what's happening. Now he's going to be back there playing. But... I want to move off that subject because I have something that's more important, in, in my opinion, in this, in this podcast about respect. 
And I think that's the reason why Misha and I have this relationship, because it has to come from, firstly, you have to respect one another. The only way two alphas can work together is if they have respect. Because there's no way two alphas can be in the same room together. I agree. Trust me, like he's super, super alpha, and I am super alpha in a lot of my ways. Sometimes I think he's more alpha than I am, but when it really comes down to it, I'm like, fuck no. Like, the alpha, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you know yeah. what I mean? Like, when it, the truth comes out, like, it's just me it's trying to suppress it, but it's not. I think, you know, there, right? So, but we're just different no, lines. But, but, but we are not suppressing it. Well, I not, see myself. But we're just I different see. lines. It's two we, different we, lines. If we had to dude. suppress it, we wouldn't be able to no, function. Exactly. What I'm saying is, like, it's two alphas. Yeah. I see myself more alpha than you two combined. <laughs> I do. Oh, yeah. Seriously. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. No, because you literally live like a lion. You sleep all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have sex, <laughs> you eat, you <laughs> sleep all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you literally live like a lion. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we are more like lioness. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm spending. Yeah. We're going to provide. Well, guys, I mean, I'm spending a lot of time thinking and <laughs> contemplating, you know? <laughs> and you know that the brain is like <laughs> using 30% of your energy. Yeah. So I need my sleep. I need my beauty sleep. I need my carbs. <laughs> I'm joking. Please nah, continue. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. We can have fun on all these serious conversations. So the reason why, because this is one of the most, uh, you know, reasons why we're sitting in these chairs is to, to talk about the relationship between us, the relationship between Ronan and Karnas, the, re the reason why the brand is strong, you know, the methodology, I guess, is what you were saying earlier about what it, what it means. And it's, that's why we can be together and, and, and have the, the logo together, was because it was like, okay, two lions that aren't trying to fight for that pack, two lions that are going, okay, cool, well, you've got your strengths, I've got my strengths, okay, you do your part, I do my part and vice versa and it comes well without respect that wouldn't that wouldn't exist there has to be a respect for the person not for what they do yeah because he said oh the thing i was i was fearful of nathan when he comes is because i loved his style but it looked like a very aggressive style that he could be arrogant because of the style and, and people could take it that way because it's very it almost looks arrogant as i walk down and do my magic because i don't care have no risk call no give a shit about my opponent at all. When I knocked him out, every single fight, I'd knocked him out and walked off. My, my, my girlfriend, who didn't know fighting until I met her, right? And now she, my girlfriend right now. And she's just like, she's like, babe, like, you just knock him out and walk off. Like, you, you just roost her up and just walk off. Like, not intentionally, but I'm just like, bang! And I'm just like, my big rooster chest. And just walk off or you don't care for them you don't ask them if they're okay you don't go and tend to them you know and i said no i don't i don't uh wish bad of them but i don't wish anything for them because that was just how i did what i did so it was very just like very you know powerful like that so could, you could you could confuse it for like you know egotistical or like you know maniac. yeah yeah but, but the, 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 that's why i saw so, it so you could hear like, oh, okay is, is that gonna be the is that arrogance in the ring gonna be him in life because there are a lot of fighters and i know there's a few he's crossed his path over the years that he, he he was ashamed after they met um is it gonna be like that so then what so then the reason why the relationship could could move forward is because there wasn't it was a respect for each other there was a respect not for I res he respects me for my phenomenal career. Okay, boom. Okay, put that aside. Done. Okay, now who are you? Me, I, you know what I mean? Just yeah, like, okay, yeah. I can respect Misha for everything he's done. Okay, cool. Now who are you? Yeah, I, I, I don't yeah. even look him through like, like he was a fighter ever. I look at him as a friend, brother, as a person he became now. And I respect him even more now. Oh, absolutely. So yes. then, once the respect has then been found, now the work can be done. Yeah. So then what we did is many times I'd come back here for like six, uh, six week periods. I'd come and stay here and I'd travel through Europe. Misha would help me get seminar tours. I had my European brand going everywhere. And I'd come back here and then we decided to do this, the, the fight camps. And then I started to teach Misha all the things that I like to do in my fighting with my, my elbows and my different kind of mentality. And then, and, cause then Misha said to me that, that he had one missing link to his style. He couldn't, and, he, and when, when he trained with me, he's like, he just knew straight away that was it. Nice. And, then I, and then I never done Dutch 
drills because in Australia we don't do Dutch drills. Like we do, we train like tie boxes, which is just hitting bags and pads. We don't do partner work unless you're sparring. So then I come over here, started teaching seminars and doing a lot of like Dutch drills from Misha and then obviously, you know, getting those kind of things together and then adding, but not, the thing that I would say about myself is I didn't necessarily take any of Misha's movements and add them to my style because I felt like that would be not truthful to my 15 year fight career. But I also, but I took different ways to put it together, you know, from Misha. And then Misha took the elbows that I love to do without changing his style and putting it in with what he already does. So then, so then we, we started doing that for a while. And, and of course the gym at that time was Ronan Gym. Mm. And it wasn't like the first day, like, oh, it's, it's Ronan Carnage. It was like, move, we were in an, it was in an, old, an older building, a small gym, you know, and uh, then he was gonna move to, to this big, this bigger arena, which is this gym now. And it was like in the transition of that period, we'd grown this relationship where we were a team. Even though I was living in Australia, we were, we were very connected and there was a team on the other side, on, 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 in the you know, other side of the world in Europe, you know, he'd help me with seminars, he'd, he'd help get my name around, around these, you know, these, the, the Balkan countries that I thought no one even would know who I am and they probably never thought they'd ever be able to see me, just like Misha thought, but then Misha contacted me and, and the, so he was the link to getting everyone in this whole you know, side of Europe to actually eventually have a seminar with me. So then the, the, the brand just grew and the relationship grew and the connection grew. And then it was really about two men standing next to each other. And, and the fighting is one part of it. It was just, it was more that powerful brotherhood of like, okay, I'm, I'm bringing this to the table. He's bringing this to the table, but it's one. Yeah. And, and we did like a lot of, it's like, it's like it didn't happen overnight. No. We had to do testing. We, we did like a, a seminar together and I was with him. He was doing it. Then we do a fight camp together where I was also teaching, he was teaching. Yeah. So he had to see if he can like work it like that, you know, having one more guy like teaching something that he's not or doing some, something yeah, different. Yeah, because so one thing, because I, oh, that's, that's great yeah. you said that because the truth is, is out of this relationship, I'm the superstar in the fight arena, right? Yeah. I'm 11 time world champion, blah, 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 blah. So it's not like I'm going to come in and go, okay, whatever you want to teach is okay with me. <laughs> Fuck no. It's like, no, whatever I want to teach is going to be okay with you. I didn't, you know, not being that arrogant, but like, as the, as the world champion, it's like I couldn't just like completely flip who I am after all those years and flip it where but, And I would never want you and to. He wouldn't want, so then that was that, see, that was where the respect held in. It's like, oh, well, I'm not, he's not changing me. he's not changing who he is but yet he knew this is what i love about misha is he had respect enough for me to know that if we're going to work together he needs to change a little bit in the fights in the fight movements because that's what he was attracted to and that's what brought us together was the, the, the fight movements the mentality and then of course as we spoke about around the mindset stuff and all the other kind of things and that's when like the, the, that, that was when the duality was like growing and growing and growing together so i know i i, I butt in and, and spoke out loud but yeah we it wasn't just like that it was like no. he had to prove himself but then i also had to prove myself because it's, because he's changing his gym name i'm not changing my gym name yeah he he's not cha he didn't need carnage on the back of ronan no he didn't he's already got his own gym actually right now even if he kept it the same it would make no difference could still be brothers We'd still be friends. I'd still travel here to a seminar. Wouldn't make a difference. But it's also respect. But it's also respect and a and, life. And a I, life always, respect. I always wanted. I always wanted because you know, when you finish your career, sooner or later people forget about you. They remember that you were once good. Mm. But you know, they're not all, all the time. Another fighters are coming. New fighters. New fighters. New fighters. And for me. Uh, of course, I'm going to be respectful and hopefully I'm going to change because I want to learn from him. As well, I learned from all the fighters and, and coaches that were here. And I knew that I need what he has for me to be better. I'm, oh, I'm, I always say that I learn from everybody. But, you know, there's just so much you can learn from somebody 
not everybody are specific. I can uh, work with 10 coaches, but from two only I can take something that I can use. Yeah. And that I know how to teach. This is the most important thing. When you take something, uh, first see if you are the one to teach it, if you know how to teach it, so people would know how to use it. And when he came, you know, I, re I remember, you know, he, he was uh, he was standing in front of me, and he was doing technique, and I was looking at his legs, and he was heating me up. And I was and said, and and uh, he said, what are you looking? At? I, I was looking at your leg position. I said, you're smart. <laughs> he yeah. said to me, you're smart. Yeah, no, because I know what I need from you. It's, uh, it's, it's yeah, because no one looks at those details. They just yeah. see all the they see yeah. the the hurricane. Yeah. yeah, and and I took and I wanted to work with him so so I can see how he teaches stuff, so I can take the thing that I like the most about them and be able to teach it without without uh, prior fight with it. You know, now I finished my fight career, so I could never use it for fighting but uh, to be able to teach it later i have to uh, see it from him and learn from him like but and i have to see him not teaching myself but teaching others how to do it and this is how it became and then out of respect and out of me wanted his name to live longer and to be bigger mm. i had the need to 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 put my hero by my side to yeah. show everybody the thing we're talking about this whole podcast yeah it's all about the respect I'm anyway very uh, glad and grateful that almost from the beginning you know I was on the side somehow you know and always following what you guys are doing and going with you guys to yes. seminars and, and and fighting camps and it was a fantastic ride and um, I really truly hope that you're going to continue doing that great stuff. Well, we, 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 and, uh, we just started. Yeah, <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. I can see that. And uh, and uh, Nathan, thank you really that you have taken the time, you know, to sit with us and to do this podcast with us. And uh, Misha is going to have the last question this time and uh, yeah, to finish, I, I have very to finish this before he, before, he, before he gives the last question, I just want to say one thing also is that before I come along into Misha's life, he was doing a lot of kickboxing because I was with the sport over here. Yeah. But he had a love for Muay Thai. Yeah. He loved Muay Thai. He went to Thailand. He loved Muay Thai more than anything. But kickboxing was the, 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 the fights, the promotion, that's what you had to do, which most people in Europe have to do that a lot of the time. So, you know, like I got he got to, I got to like ignite the Muay Thai side yeah. of him again. That's kinda of like where I felt like the energy changed. Of course. So I got to he goes, Oh yeah, you know, he's back to the elbows and the knees, he's more the elbows than anything, but it was like that ignited him. So my my like like proud moment for, to be able to give to Misha, what have I given to him is like that, that activation, you yeah. know, really activate that, that elbow spirit, that Muay Thai spirit that, that he originally was from the beginning and brought him back home almost. Yeah. You know, I brought him You're back right. home to what he loved. And so that was what I'm, I'm like super like, like happy in myself and happy that I could do something for, for Misha because he's done so much for me is to activate you know that 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 Muay Thai um, spirit, and we talked about you know respect earlier, and and and, and, ha and Muay Thai has a much more martial arts feel. Yeah. It's a martial art, so there's a lot more respect in it. Yeah. Then, commonly speaking, out of all that fighting sports, if you want to go kickboxing, boxing, and mixed martial arts, and then Muay Thai, out of the four, Muay Thai is the one that still has the most respect. There's no trash talking yeah. because there's that spiritual side of absolutely it, yes where there isn't the spiritual side in boxing there isn't a spiritual side in kickboxing and there's surely not a spiritual side in mixed martial arts nothing against any of those other three they're all phenomenal athletes phenomenal sportsmen and there is some professional beautiful people in that those, those realms as well and in muay thai there's also some bad people as well but overall it's more the martial art yeah. side of the fight game 
that has that that deep respect so Misha already had that anyway but I feel like that's that spiritual connection as well that's kind of like we, we we like to feel that you know and have that part of uh, the journey together so you know what's funny everyone in the gym since you came like right now said what's happening I said what you have a different energy now I was more like energetic you know I, I got the uh, my will got up, you know, for teaching, for training, to working with kids, with this, with this. You know, it, it, it's a strange thing. It's a strange thing, really. Very nice. Yeah, but I, I have, I have, to, I have to, to tell one thing. Uh, uh, now, listening to Nathan to all this podcast and everything, I speak with him almost like uh, once a week, like regularly we're in contact. And seeing what he does, uh, he has really dedicated this part of his life to inspire people and to motivate them and to teach them something and uh, the best way he's doing it now is through his car chats the, 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 this car chat became like really 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 popular what can you tell us about that oh yeah and where can they check the way can they see oh it? yes the carnage car chat, carnage <laughs> car chat. Well, the car chat, the reason why it's called a car chat is because I just started to like, you know, in driving in my car, you know, you're always thinking and then I just sort of like would pull over, park where I've got to be and I've got a thought on my mind and I just whip out my phone and, you know, hold my phone in my hand and start talking and, you know, give whatever it is that I feel like the lesson is that I want to give, give out. Um, they're not daily, they're not weekly, they're called to when I'm called to it, when it's feeling, when, when, when it's coming out of me, where I need to speak. So sometimes I can do three in a, three days in a row, and you might not see me for three weeks because it's just I'm just not feeling it, and I don't want to force it. I'm not going to push it. Um, so then I, I was just like a, you know a chat, and then and then and then I got a, 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 a another car, and then I actually had my like phone now in the spot. And then my son was like, "Oh, you should call it Carnage Car Chats because it's you know in, in your car." I was like, sweet. So now, like, I, got, I think if I get in a studio, I'm going to have to build a car <laughs> in a studio. But one day we'll, we'll, we'll get... It, it, it's cheaper to do it from a car. One day we'll get professional and we'll, we'll get the studio. And we'll do all those things right now. But I just um, use that time. And, and most people on social media, it's like 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, you've lost me. Yeah. You know, because it's fast. And even sometimes I, I might be the, one of those critics that will lose, someone will lose me, depending if I'm interested. But I thought, well, I, I'm going to speak. Now it's up to you if you want to listen. Just like this podcast, what, it's going to be an hour and a half long. It's up to them if they want to dedicate an hour and a half to their life to get something that might help change their life forever. If they want to get 10 minutes in and turn it off, that's up to them. It's, it's really their journey. So I just started to talk, whether it's three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, up to 10 minutes on my car chats to help inspire people through different thoughts and different ways and different things that might have happened and then I'll explain it in a different way or something. But even this conversation, we could talk about this conversation. I'll start, hey, it's here, Nathan. Welcome to Nathan Car Chat. You know, the other day I was doing this amazing podcast with my two friends in Serbia and we're talking about respect. You know, what is respect? So that'll be like a topic and then I'll just talk. And then sometimes it's like, I can see the timer and I'll be like, so, for those who are still listening at 8 minutes and 13 seconds, this message is for you. <laughs> and then like, because I know, okay, I've got that person's attention. So, one, it was me wanting to do what I want to do, okay? Which is to, to help motivate and inspire people to be um, the better version of themselves. So, I figured, well, now is a good time to build that. And in the future, I want, I'd love to be able to make this what I do. Because I feel like there's a big calling on my life to do that. Um, through all of the past and all of where we're at right now and, I've, and everything that's going to come from this point forward. So my car, Carnage Car Chats, they're on my Instagram. Uh, Carnage Corbett is my uh, handle. And uh, like I said, th there's a lot on there, so you could scan through there and have a look at them now. Go back, there's so many on there already. But um, I've been in Europe, so I haven't done a Carnage Car Chat for a month because I've been <laughs> traveling, but I'll be back in California soon and you can be sure to uh, have some Car Chats ready. Thank you very much, Nate. You, uh, as always, on the left side, Misha Ronin Bachulov, co-host of Radirin Ronin podcast. In the middle, our dear guest, Nathan Carnage, Nathan Corbett. Carnage Corbett. It was wonderful to have you here. My name is Nikola Radin, and stay strong, guys.